Hey guys, um, thanks for watching today. We are going to, I guess, we're going to be vulnerable with you guys. Uh, this is a topic that's pretty hard to talk about. And I know that like Liam and I have talked about it together and we think that our experiences may be able to help somebody, um, whether an athlete or not, uh, with the same kind of issues. So today we're going to be tackling um, eating disorders, uh, problems eating or with body image, anything along those lines. I just want to say that neither of us are uh, counsellors. We're not mental health professionals. We are just two athletes who have experience with this kind of stuff and we want to share it with you if you want to watch it. Um, I hope that it helps at least one person and if it does then it's a success. So, um, so I'm Lizzie. I'm Lizzie Q. I am an Olympic diver for New Zealand. Um, I'm currently training for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, which is now 2021. Um, so yeah, that's me pretty much. Yeah, and I'm Liam, um, also a diver for New Zealand. Me and Lizzie grew up training together um, and yeah, currently training for the Tokyo Olympics as well. So, And we've, me and Lizzie have been through a lot together. Obviously we, um, as, as you'll find out, we've been through um, some great things and some not so great things together as well so yeah <sighs> so what are we talking about today so do you want to maybe just dive into sort of what what you went through lizzie in, in terms of what we're talking about today yeah so i guess i'm just going to share my experience a little bit um of like what i struggled with pretty much i guess i um i don't really know how to say it so i used to throw up my food like pretty regularly um I'm not proud of it obviously who would be but now that I'm in a healthier space I uh, feel comfortable enough to share it with you guys so I a lot of my days were not eating very much throughout the day um calorie counting really restricting what I ate like down to the little like even if I would have a little more than a teaspoon of peanut butter I would calorie count that you know I was very strict on myself trying to control everything that I ate and then usually throughout the day a whole day of training it makes you hungry so I would come home and I would eat not even much for dinner honestly it was probably a normal meal so I would eat a normal meal and then of course afterwards I would crave sugar so I would eat something sweet I'd feel instantly guilty and then I would go and throw up and that was pretty much a lot of nights for a while um, it wasn't always like that but at one point it did get pretty bad and yeah it happened quite a lot um, and on the weekends I would binge eat because I was so hungry from the week and it was just a cycle of purging binging feeling guilty feeling terrible um, and yeah what about you Liam yeah it's crazy um, similar stuff actually like um, I, um, I suppose started having some sort of self-consciousness about my body image and stuff and which honestly was, I, I never, ever, ever thought that would ever be something that I would have to deal with. Um, and then I started to have these sort of issues with my body image and stuff. And that eventually led to a very unhealthy relationship with food and, um, being obsessed with calories on a similar type of level like what you're saying and then um yeah restricting certain things and then binging on other things and then feeling guilty and then feeling like I had to go and throw it up like you're saying and, and I felt like I was very much in control of that but I very much wasn't um and so yeah just not not very um not a very healthy relationship with food or, or with myself actually so so yeah. when did it like start for you do you think like when do you remember having any kind of uh i guess something that's abnormal like that yeah well i i sort of over the last few years have sort of gone through peaks and valleys i suppose like um about three years ago i started struggling with massive fatigue um my performance was just dropping 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 and um that eventually led to me getting some blood tests and finding out that i had low very low testosterone um, and obviously that's a key hormone in all individuals especially males um, and partly to do with that sort of increased my 
um, body fat percentage, which I was still quite lean, but for me, you know, I was used to being very lean and obviously in a sport like diving, we're so exposed wearing next to nothing. Um, and so that just started to play on my mind and that was sort of building up to the world champs in 2017. Um, and so I noticed, yeah, I noticed that I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. And so that sort of eventually led to me thinking more about, okay, well, what am I eating then? And maybe I need to restrict myself more. And that just started the cycle of, you know, it wasn't working and then I would be guilty and then I would want to binge. And then it kind of just manifested from there. What, how did it start with you or when? Um, I guess like thinking about it, I think my relationship with food struggled like way back in senior year of high school, like that early. Um, and it just, it wasn't with like the purging that didn't start. It was just restricting calories, like thinking I couldn't eat something cause I wanted to be skinny, um, which is just ridiculous. But a lot of people feel that way. Um, and then I, I don't know how I just stopped doing that, but I just did. It just kind of like worked its way out. Um, and then I would say after the Olympics, I gained a little bit of weight. Um, I just relaxed a lot of food uh, and I really wanted to become like serious about diving the Olympics really like sparked a I don't know sparked an energy in me that made me want to be so good so I put a lot of pressure on myself and I think it was my sophomore year sophomore junior and senior year of college that it started um, and that was basically to control my diving and I thought if I can control and restrict what I eat, then I can control how good I am at diving, which just doesn't have any correlation, doesn't make any sense. But at the time, it did make sense to me. I was like, I want to be good. And I was like, you know, I have to do everything outside of the pool. And restricting eating is not the way to do that. But in my head, I was like, I need to be lean. I need to have abs. I need to look like, I don't know, look like whoever, look chiseled and be that perfect 10 diver. But yeah, so that continued all the way through senior year. Um, and I had a, I had a big, like, I guess like rock bottom of my career after, after the uh, comm games actually, where I failed to dive. I was just miserable, hated diving, hated myself. And I, I took a long break and I was still struggling with it within, but then I started to actually come to terms with it and try to seek professional help um and I think that that's what started the journey to getting better it never instantly happened it was a journey and a process um so yeah so that leads me to why did you do that like Liam like from your perspective why would anyone put themselves through that yeah I mean I was going to go into that like I guess it's just important to point out that all all actions have a positive intention even if that intention seems very strange like obviously to us now looking back you know that was strange but at the time your positive intention was to become a better diver so you know you were trying to do it to, you're trying to do the right thing with with the tools and the knowledge that you have at the time um and so yeah for me what was i trying to achieve i mean i suppose the same sort of thing as you like i was I was so driven to be better and I, you know, I, I also had sort of gained a little bit of weight over taking a break and that messed with my head. And, you know, people were sort of making fun of me cause I was like the last person in the world that people would thought that I would get, you know, a little bit of extra mass on me. Um, and that was cool, but it obviously affected me at a, a deeper level. And so I was just trying to, you know, get back to where I was, get, get ripped again, like you say. And, but I think my perception of, of what that ideal body image is just kind of got real messed up. And um, I didn't even know what I was trying to achieve at that point. I think I was just in this habit of the cycle of trying to get somewhere, but I didn't really know where I was trying to get to. Um, I was just trying to improve myself by not really doing what I should have been doing, looking back at it now. Um, so, you know, I suppose, did it work? Well, no, you know, obviously it just made me more unhealthy. I think, you know, we're talking about trying to, we're trying to improve ourselves and we're trying to get a better 
body for diving and stuff and and we were trying to do that through restriction whereas you know looking at it now educating ourselves a little bit more and and sort of reflecting on on things actually you want to do that by feeding yourself and nourishing yourself and um looking at all the positives of food and of training and recovery and stuff you know that was another thing i became a little bit obsessed with exercise thinking that i had to burn more calories but that was just fatiguing me even more and and putting me in a more stressed state um which wasn't healthy either i think you might have um gone through that a little bit as well yeah definitely i mean like thinking back now it actually seems like crazy to me that we went through that and I was just like thinking about this time like it was at Commonwealth Games like thinking about and it's not funny but now looking back at it there's a point at Commonwealth Games where Liam and I were both struggling with this thing and we were open to each other about it because we're such good friends and we didn't necessarily encourage each other but we didn't stop it because we were both unhealthy like mentally so we kind of reinforced each other's actions because we were both going through it and we understood at that level so really? there was a point in the yeah so there was a point in the commonwealth games where i went to the bathroom to throw up after i think it was lunch or something like that and some walked, yeah yeah and i walked by and you walked the other way right and you went to go throw up so like and then afterwards we kind of talked about it a little bit do you remember that and just think about that for a minute like we're at the commonwealth games like one of the biggest events for us as, as divers and we're throwing up our food like that is not going to help our performance at all like it's just pretty mental to think about um yeah i mean at the time you know we thought oh, it's all good you know we're we're aware of it so we're in control and you know i'm, I'm doing this on purpose so it's all good but yeah it really wasn't exactly and like i guess it goes back to like why was i doing it now that i'm not in that state of mind it's hard for me to reflect on that the mindset that i was in because i'm so different now being healthier um but I guess it was for my performance. I thought that, you know, we're, we're in such small costumes when we dive, like on TV in front of a lot of people, our, our bodies are pretty much our, our instrument for our, our practice. And, you know, you want the best instrument to score the best points and you want to look the best. You don't, you don't want that criticism. Like our sport is judging us to be perfect pretty much. And we're pretty much constantly told that we're not perfect. Um, like on a daily basis, you know, we're not getting perfect tens every dive. And I guess it's hard to, you know, just compartmentalize that and to be just about the dive and not about you as a person and how you look and you day to day. Like just because I didn't get a perfect 10 dive doesn't mean that I am not worthy of self-love and being comfortable in my own skin. And like, it's just crazy to me. Um, that you know that I that I was treating myself like that but it's I understand because I went through it and so did Liam um so I guess like I just want to ask like did you have any side effects or like negative consequences from doing this yeah I mean yeah it is crazy and, and like I've never really sort of talked about this too much with anyone apart from you obviously um but just thinking about it like you know we would we would you know we went and did that at the commonwealth games that's just one example but we were trying to we thought oh we might have eaten something that's not going to benefit us so i'm just going to go and get rid of it whereas actually getting that process of throwing up is actually going to harm you far more than one donut or whatever it was that we'd eaten i can't remember um and so yeah that that <laughs> it's just crazy to think about but um side effects i mean you know, obviously at the time I was going through a lot of um, hormonal issues, as I mentioned earlier, and a lot of that was to do with from a, a state of stress. Um, you know, I'd, I'd been through some, um, I'd struggled with the fact that I didn't qualify for the Olympics the year before and 
on top of other, you know, new body image issues and stuff like that. And I, and I was just in this state of stress. And at the time I didn't think I was, but, um, so, you know, just adding to that by throwing up every now and again was, was just increasing that, that stress on my body. So the side effects were, um, you know, just increased hormonal issues. And, um, from that, you know, I was just living in this sort of light depression and not, um, not real fond of other people, I suppose, um, sort of judging other people a lot. And, um, yeah, my, my performance was just awful. I was so fatigued all the time because I, I wasn't feeding my body. Um, so I, I really struggled to, to just get through training. Um, and, and, you know, during that time, you know, I was doing, I was training some big dives at the time and then I just got to a point where I couldn't do those anymore. I had to, I had to decrease the degree of difficulty in my, my diving list. Cause I just, I just didn't have the strength. Um, so yeah. And I was, I was struggling to sleep as well. Cause you know, being in a, in a stress state, you struggle to sleep and then that's obviously not helping with recovery. So it was just this, it's this cycle. Um, I'm imagining you were experiencing similar things. Yeah. I mean, I think number one is like, I wasn't able to enjoy food, which food is amazing and it should be enjoyed which sucks when you're eating it and you're not even in the moment. That's a lot of things. I, I felt like a, a lot of the time I was taken out of the moment because I was worrying in my head. Like you said about stress, I felt like I was constantly stressed. And that is not a state to live in. Um, you know, life is way too short to feel that way all the time. Um, diving and being an athlete is stressful enough without the added pressure of worrying about what you look like all the time and worrying about what you eat. So uh, that was definitely big, I guess, you know, not, um, not being able to go to a restaurant or like feeling guilty for like going to a restaurant with my friends because I didn't want to eat that many calories. That was a big downfall. And again, the hormones, the hormones like really messed with me. And I, I noticed because I was angry at everyone and everything. Like I didn't enjoy diving. I didn't even enjoy anything. I felt like I was just angry all the time. And that's probably because I was starving, um, you know, and it's just like, I would, I would go to the point where I'd be like, you know, that person's eating too much when they're not, but it just really shows you how somebody struggling on the inside can like reflect on the outside. Uh, yeah. And that's what I think. Like I was ugly on the inside. So I was ugly on the outside. If yeah. that makes sense. And I didn't mean to be, but I was just struggling so much. So, yeah. yeah I think in a, in a insecurities are, um, or your judgments rather are a reflection of your inner insecurities. Yeah. Yeah. It's I think shame. also you were saying about not being able to enjoy the food. I think I had gotten to a point where I had very much labeled good foods, bad foods. And if something was bad, you know, I, I just, I couldn't even go near it. And if something was good, because I would never go near the bad, I might end up binging on the good stuff, which then becomes bad. Um, so yeah, it got to yeah. a very point of view and calories. It was all just about numbers and stuff and not, you know, food is so amazing. All the, you know, what it can do for your body. Just one meal can make you feel amazing. Um, Cause it's feeding your body, you know, literally with goodness and stuff. So yeah. So, um, I guess, like, how did you stop? Have you stopped? What's the situation now? Yes. I mean, I think, I don't think there's ever, you know, with things like this, there's not just a, okay, I'm going to stop. You know, I think you, you can do that, but then eventually you might have a, a relapse or whatever. And that's, that's fine. You know, that that's probably going to happen. Um, but I think the first thing is just to be aware of it. And I think us beginning to talk about it with each other um, actually did make us aware of it. We knew that it wasn't right. Um, and eventually we sort of accepted that. And, and we, we started to talk with each other about if we were struggling and um, we were encouraging each other, you know, to, to do the right thing, reach out to other people and, um, just start to become a bit more mindful. You know, I've, um, I'm very much, 
um, an advocate now for, you know, meditation and mindfulness and, and um, I suppose even just meditating on, on that anxiety around food or, or whatever it is that you're experiencing and just noticing how it feels and, and sort of letting yourself feel it um, and becoming aware of it. I think that's the biggest starter is to become aware of how you're feeling and, and what you're doing. Um, if you can begin to share that, then I think that's going to you know open up your, your vulnerability and that's going to help you. It's a scary thing to do, but um, it is going to help you. And, um, and then, yeah, just becoming mindful and around when you're eating and, and just starting to learn to actually enjoy the food. And if, you know, you might, you might eat something bad, but that's okay. And, and just, you know, let yourself enjoy it rather than think about all the, the negatives, you know, you eating one bar of chocolate or whatever it is with your friends is going to have, more positives from that holistic experience than the tiny little negatives of a bit of um, sugar or some couple extra calories or whatever it is. So looking at the, the positives and all the good that you can get out of whatever it is you're doing. Yeah, that's good. And I think like giving yourself grace, just like take your time, know that it's okay that, you know, so many people struggle with this. Um, try not to like think of an easy fix or a quick fix because like what you're going through is real and it's tough and it plays with your mind. Um, so I, w I guess I'd suggest just like tell as many people as you can um, that you you will allow. I know that it's like very hard for a lot of people to just open up about something like this, but it's not enough to just tell yourself that it's not okay because you will figure out a way to justify your action. You will figure out a way to like tell yourself, no, it's okay because I'm in control or it's okay because I only do it at dinner time, not every meal. So whatever it is, you'll find a way to justify it. So I think opening up to your friends, um, you know, your parents, like anyone that you think is willing to listen and not judge you, I think it's a good idea to just open up. And you might find somebody else is dealing with the same thing or something, somebody else has dealt with the same thing in the past and they might have some tips, you know. Um, I always, you know, I'm a big advocate for mental health uh, and going to see somebody if you have the resources available is always good. You don't have to talk about your eating issues straight away, but um, maybe eventually you will want to. I, I know I saw a therapist for at least three years and it helped me tremendously. Um, and I didn't even open up about my eating issues until the later part of it. So, yeah. Yeah. I think again, like, like you said, a quick fix, like even with counselors and stuff, I think often sometimes people will go and talk to someone once and think, Oh, I didn't get anything out of that. So I'm not going to go back again. But like you say, it's not a quick fix. I mean, I, I'm very much, I think I can be quite intense and want to do something there and then and, hundred percent you know all out um but that's just not not how certain things work i suppose so yeah just being um being kind with yourself and, and allowing yourself to be vulnerable i think the more you can expose something like um an unhealthy relationship with food or whatever it is the less power it will have um and i think you know, it's not, it's not a super comfortable thing to talk about. So, you know, exposing that is not easy. I mean, I'm, I'm not still not super comfortable talking about it myself, but I hope that by Lizzie and I opening up today, um, maybe that can show that, you know, you can as well. Um, and if we can just help one person, you hopefully then, um, then that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm saying like, being from a healthier point of view, I'm not 100% perfect yet. I still do struggle, and I think Liam does the same. Like, just with, sorry, there's a dog. Um, just with, like, body image, there'll be days where I feel great in my skin, and there'll be days that I don't, and that's okay. As long as, you know, you reinforce good habits. Uh, eating is good. Um, build that relationship with food where it's a healthy one, where you can enjoy little bits of, you know, delicious foods and even if you do happen to have you know a bad day of eating or whatever it's not bad it's just life and you're going to be okay time will pass and just remain consistent 
be positive on yourself, give yourself that self love. I think that's really important. Just working on yourself. Like my therapist always says, filling your bucket. So like fill your bucket, which means like things that you like to do that make you feel good. You know, if that's like going to get a haircut or going to get a massage or whatever, do those things so that your bucket is full. Um, and acting from a place where your bucket is full is a lot different to acting when it's empty and you're miserable and you're sad and you don't like yourself. So definitely don't neglect yourself. Absolutely. Your body is your body and it wants to serve you. So if you just give it a little bit of love, it's going to it's gonna give you far more than you give it, I suppose, in terms of um, what it can do for you. So. Yeah, I've, hopefully you've got something out of this. And um, if one yeah. second, Liam, I just I want to share one more thing that I just remembered, um, which is actually really cool in terms of numbers. In diving uh, at my school at LSU, we get um, like body fat tested, you know, like body fat, muscle composition, like all of that. And when I was in the the peak of my eating issues, I was light, lightest I've ever been but I had more fat and less muscle than I did when I, you know, a year later when I went to go check it out and I was like, Oh, I don't want to, I don't even want to see the results. Cause I know that I'm heavier cause I've been eating, you know, I've been eating, I haven't been throwing up, but actually my weight was a little bit more, but I had the most lean muscle that I've had and less body fat percentage. So like, just take that in when I was eating, I looked better and I was, more in shape had less fat than when I was starving myself and being miserable. So that's just like solid evidence that starving yourself is not good. And your performance was way better as well. I mean, you had an yeah. amazing champs, you know, um, and then if you compare that to Commonwealth games, like you were saying, you struggled and stuff. So add that into the equation as well. Exactly. I failed a dive and, Pretty much, I think I came last at Commonwealth Games. What was that? A, a two years before, and then when I got healthy, World Championships this time, I made the final and I came eighth in the world. So that's a big comeback. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty amazing actually. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, hopefully you've gotten something out of this, and and if you feel comfortable, then feel free to you know, add something in the comments. Um, maybe you've gone through something or have heard of, you know, someone going through something or whatever it is. Um, feel free to reach out to us and hopefully us sort of um, making ourselves vulnerable today will help you to do the same um, at some point in the near future. So thanks guys. Thank you guys. We really appreciate you watching. Hopefully we helped someone. Bye. <laughs> oh, wait a second. I need to stop it.